Welcome to All About PostgreSQL Security. I'm joined by our speaker, Ibar Ahmed, Senior Software Architect at Percona, who will discuss all of the available security techniques used in Postgres 13. My name is Lindsay Hooper. I'm one of the Postgres conference organizers, and I'll be your moderator for this webinar. If you need anything, you can message me in the chat function under Postgres conference host. A little bit about your speaker. Prior to coming to open source development, Ibar had vast experience in software design and development, where his main focus was on the system level embedded development. In 2006, he joined Enterprise DB to start his career in open source, and he has contributed to the PostgreSQL community as well as other open source communities. His contributions range from the main performance feature enhancements to various PostgreSQL modules. Within the database field, he has experience in other well-known databases such as MySQL, Oracle, and NoSQL databases such as MongoDB and Hadoop. His experience is not limited to core databases, but rather with the tools related to databases such as Hive, HBase, and Spark. With that, I'll hand it off to Ibrar. Take it away. Hello, everybody. So good morning, good afternoon. So in which world of you are living. So today is we are welcome to you the PostgreSQL world. So today's topic is all about PostgreSQL security. My name is Ibrahim Ahmed. Hey, who am I? So as I think she already introduced me that my name is Ibrahim Ahmed and I have been in software industry since 1998. I have been contributing in different open source software like Chromium, Chrome and PostgreSQL. So I have more than 14 years of experience in PostgreSQL development. So I, am, I authored two books in PostgreSQL, PostgreSQL Developer's Guide and PostgreSQL 9.6 High Performance. I also contributed in for the PG Upgrade, Index Only Scan and on foreign data wrappers. I am also a PhD scholar. And so today's agenda. So initially we will discuss what is database security? Because it's really important to discuss that what is security is and what a database security means. So then we will discuss a triple A. And what is triple A? Authentication, authorization, and accounting. So we will discuss each topic in detail. And then we could we will discuss some key concept of encryption, and then we will discuss the security best practices. At the end, I will entertain your questions and give you the answer at the end of this slide. So database security. So database security comprise of five different things, five different things. The first one is the network. So where your database is or your node is, you have to take care of your security measures. Where is your node in the network? Because you have to secure your database, your node, everything from the out incoming traffic from the network. So you have to secure your node from the network from where it can be accessed. So it's the first thing. Then you have to secure your host. First, you secure your network. Then you have to secure your host in which your database is running. So first, you have to secure your network. Then you have to secure your host. Then you have to secure your database. So after that, you have to secure your application. At the end, you have to secure your data within the database. So if I, we think that if one of these module is compromised, then there is no meaning of security. That means if your database is not secure and how much security you are providing is meaningless because it's already compromised. So you have to secure all of these things your network, your host, your data, your application, and your database. And each, on each layer, you have to secure database separately. 
there are a different tool available to secure your network and there are different tools available to secure your host and similarly there are many configuration available to secure your database and when you are writing your application you have to secure your application and last you have to secure your data within your database in this webinar we will discuss how to secure your data and your database in this webinar we will not discuss how to secure your network how to secure your host and how to secure your application so we only discuss how to secure your database along with your data so in this picture if you see in the middle you can see up a user you you gave the access him to the database to the network to the host to the data and the application and the and the man in the red you only gave access to the application so you have secured your database network host data from that man so that man cannot access all of these four module he can only access the application so you you have to define some rule so what kind of an a user can what kind of a level of security so a triple a that's the most important thing so what is the triple a triple a is a is authentication authorization and accounting it's really simple words when we are talking about this authentication that means who are you or which user are allowed to access the database so you have to authenticate that these user can access database and these user cannot access that uh, cannot access the database or the user accept these user cannot access the database so authentication means to authenticate the users it's a similar when you are logging to the gmail account you are logging to the, so that user that when you are providing your username that if you are allowed then it, the system authenticate you that you are the valid user you can access the system you can access the your gmail account similarly in database if you have a user and database allowed them that and this allow you that's called authentication so this whole module where your user is being authenticated is called authentication so then the second is authorization what is the authorization so when you are able to authenticate your, your user then the system has to decide that what you can do with the database we're talking about the in database term that after the authentication what things you can perform to the database is called authorization so database give you some privileges that you can do this and you can do this and you cannot do these things so this is authorization so in simple word what are the user allowed to access is called authorization and the third one is accounting so what the user did in the database the third one is what user did to the database is recorded somewhere and that's called is accounting or sometime we are calling it auditing that we see the audit logs that what things a user has performed so with these things with these triple a's the the main security aspect has been covered so you are authenticated that you are allowed to enter into database or not you are authorized to do this task or not and all your action has been recorded and call accounting so within the database your security is complete almost almost that i will discuss that where you have to do some more security measures so the first one is the authentication so be careful when i am talking about the authentication authorization and accounting or in sense accounting or auditing i will talk about in terms of postgresql so there are some more things that we can discuss which are not related to postgres but we are not discussing that so 
whatever I will discuss here is related to PostgreSQL. So now when I'm talking to the authentication, the PostgreSQL has three kinds of authentications. So on the right side, you can see the operating systems. Like I just put some main operating system like Windows, Linux, Mac, Mac OS, FreeBSD, you can put that. So the right side is totally covered with the operating systems. And in the bottom, you can see the users. And on the left side, as you can see, uh, external tools, external tools like Radius, LDAP, and other tools. So in the middle, you can see a PostgreSQL node. So we have three kind of an authentication method in PostgreSQL. First one, PostgreSQL has its own authentication method. So I am calling it a PostgreSQL internal authentication method. And PostgreSQL can authenticate you from using the OS authentication. And similarly, PostgreSQL has also has a capability to authenticate you from the third party tools a third party servers. So these are the three things. So if we are discussing PostgreSQL internal authentication, there are a trust, reject, MD5, scram, and cert. So for the first, which is calling the trust, that means when you put trust into your configuration file, that means that user, this IP address or this database is allowed to enter that database. So don't think about, don't ever think about use trust in your production database. So just think about it. There is no authentication method trust in your production database. So I, it's, it's totally out of question to use that as far as the security is concerned. If you don't want any security and you just doing that some uh, practice and something like that, you can use that. But if you are doing that in a production, I have your secure database, don't use trust. So I will tell you how to use that, this trust, reject, MD5, scram, and cert. So what is the MD5? MD5 is the hash and MD5 hash it will use. So if you have very small number of users and you want to store that users, and then you can authenticate user using the MD5. That's really good for the very small number of users. And again, if you want to use the scram, it is a better than MD5 because it has a better encryption. So you can use scram. And for the certificate based authentication, you can use the cert. That's another way to authenticate your user. And if you want your PostgreSQL, if you don't want your PostgreSQL to authenticate you, then you have an OS authentication module that you can do that PAM, peer, and ident. So you can use either of these to authenticate using the OS authentication. So then you have an external authentication method. And in that case, you have JSS API and SSPI and LDAP and the radius. So if you have a large number of users, and you want to authenticate and and want to authenticate that user, a large number of user, and you want to authenticate user, and you want to have on a central system where you want your user to be authenticated, then LDAP is one of the best method to use that. So if you want, if you have a large number of users and you want to authenticate from a central location, then use LDAP. So radius is not a very much recommended way to authenticate your user externally. So you have these method in PostgreSQL to authenticate. So that's the authentication methods. So I just told you that these were the authentication method. You can use that. So how you can use that? Where you can put this, these values to be used. So PostgreSQL have a file which is called pghba.com. I think who are familiar with PostgreSQL, 
it knows PostgreSQL has a data directory which is called a PG data. So it's environment variable dollar PG data. So in which you have all your cluster files, your database files, your configuration files, every file except some table spaces. I'm not talking about that. So your configuration files on your database files are reside into the PG data. So so do the pghba.conf file. So you have a pghba.conf file. So pghba.conf file provides authentication for a user based on the IP address, based on the databases. So there are three things that you can provide that this IP is using this kind of an authentication method or this user is using this kind of an authentication method, or this database is being authenticated using this authentication method. So I just, if you just see the pghba.conf file, that the first column you can see is a local. So then the database name, then the username, and then the authentication method, and then if you have some authentication option, which is uh, dependent on the authentication method, if you have authentication option, then you can also put that authentication method. Then instead of local, you can put the host name. That, uh, sorry, the host. When you put the host, that means you, you, you are providing the database name, you are providing the user, and you are providing the address. And this in, is the can be the IP address. So that's mean if you're providing the host, that means host authentic, a host, and then you are providing the name of database, and then you are providing the username, and then this IP address will use this authentication method. So similarly, a user is coming using SSL. So this host SSL will be used on if database name is which you provide in the database and the username you provide in the user and the IP address you are providing in the IP and then this authentication method will be used. So that's all the options are there. So for the example, in the host, I just put host and then all, all mean the all databases because I already told you the second column is the databases, the all mean the all databases. That mean a host is coming with any database. It doesn't matter which database it's uh, trying to connect. A user, any user is coming. An IP address, that mean if any user of connecting with any database coming from local machine, which is 127.0.0.1, is trusted. That means there is no need to authenticate. It's already authenticated. It's a trusted user. So that means if you are running on a database and you have this line on your computer, then you can connect your database without providing anything. You will be connected. You are a trusted user because you are on the same computer in which the database is running. So it's IP address. So the second line, if you see, let's just skip the second line because it's IPv6. So I'm not talking about IPv6 right now. So if you see in the third line that you can see the host, then a replication database with PostgreSQL user is coming from the same computer, then it will use the MD5 authentication method. It's just an example. You can write any valid values here. So a user, PostgreSQL coming to connect replication user from the, the local IP address, then MD5 authentication method will be used. So here 127, you can write IP addresses. You can write the network addresses where you can provide the IP mask so that these ranges of IP address will be use this authentication method. So you are good, in this case, you are good to have an access list. I already called it an access list, a user access list. 
so that mean whichever you so you are denying everything i already told you don't use trust in your production database so you are not adding anything in trust so you will provide the ip addresses here and you can provide the username and you can provide the databases and you are using ssl or not so you can control who can connect to your database you can connect which ip address can connect to your database you can control which user can connect to your database you can connect which database use which authentication method so you can control your all the authentication using a one single file which is a hpa.com file it will not it will it will not provide the username password combination for you but it will control is an access list so you are providing who can access the database so you are allowing or rejecting the ip address the database is our user basing on this file basis of this file so that's very really key file for the security of postgresql so you have to be very very careful when specifying anything in that file so you have to be really very very careful so don't put static dot static dot asterisk a zero as not static dot static like st all try, don't try to put all an ip address uh, in a database in a user or 0.0.0.0 that's mean all the ip address can access database and don't try to use the trust so it's up to you you can provide you can write anything but you have to be really really careful careful when writing something in that file so authentication is over that's when i'm not talking about each and every authentication method here so i am planning to have a separate webinar on authentication method and then authorization then accounting a separate method. so in this webinar i'll trying to cover all of these in general and then we will go in detail to configure postgresql to using ldap to configure postgresql using jss api then configure uh, postgresql with different methods so we will do that in later webinars so in this i will try to cover the main a generic idea of security or anything so next is authorization so in authorization we have role user and groups it's called when you are controlling that usually control by using you are creating the user you are creating the groups you are creating the roles so it's a general term and you are controlling and how you are controlling thing in normal world you are controlling that this is allowed and this is disallowed so normally in a database world we call it a grant or revoke then you can grant a user something that a user can do and you can revoke the capabilities capability of a user then and grant or revoke you can you are doing that on object so usually you are doing grant and revoke on the object like a table like a, some other object so but postgresql have some other concept which is a row level security you are not allowing or disallowing the whole table so you giving the permission to a user to access some some rows so you are not disallowing user to you do not use Uh, the whole table you can allow him to use a portion of the table a row that's called a row level security so in authorization so what is the grant or revoke so grant so here i have an example so i don't want to write some text here so just here is an example right create table accounts then in some manager table and a company name and a company email address so i just inserted a row in that that manager i just put that the amt then i put a persona in that and then i put that the ah uh, sorry it's uh, just typo here it's not amt just sorry about that it's a uh, managers is manager uh, instead of this empty so i will correct in the slides if you will need that so it's just from an example another example so i just what i did i just 
login using the manager's database. So I just did a select static from accounts. So permission denied for table accounts. So it's just the permission denied because that table has been created using a PostgreSQL user, a different user. I created a table using a different user. So this is not allowed to access that. Then a piece equal, then again, I connected using a normal PostgreSQL or Vagrant user. Then I grant command, I use a grant command, like grant all own accounts to managers. So I give the access to the account table to managers. Previously, when I have created a table using a Vagrant, uh, a different user, and then I log into the manager's user, and then try to access that table to, to access denied because that table is not belong to that user. So now I grant that the access and grant all mean I am giving the full access on accounts table to managers uh, user. So now manager user can fully access the accounts table. So like PC pool. PostgreSQL minus U, that means I'm logging using the manager user and now select static from accounts will work here. So now on the right side, I have a revoked example. So in this example, I am logging using my Vagrant or uh, PostgreSQL user. So now right now it's a Vagrant user because I'm using the Vagrant, so it's a Vagrant user. So revoke delete on accounts because that user belong to the vagrant user. So I am revoking the delete privileges. Previously, I provided the all the, I am granting all the permission to manager user on the table accounts. Now I am revoking a delete permission on accounts table from a manager's uh, accounts table to the, from the manager's user. So now, after this statement, manager's user cannot delete any row from that table. So again, previously I granted all the privileges to the manager's user and then manager's user can do anything to the accounts table. In the next, on the right side, I'm revoking a delete permission from the accounts table from the, from the manager's user. So when I use I am logging using the manager's account, manager's user, then delete from accounts will give you the error, permission denied for the accounts. So that's really simple. Previously I provided a grant access and now I am revoking the delete permission and it works. That's called a grant a revoke. So what I told you previously, what is the authorization? Authorization means what a user can do or what a user cannot do. That's authorization. So what thing a user can do, a basic thing. So that's authorization of what thing a user is authorized to do. So here on the left side, on the manager's table is authorized to fully access the accounts table. But on the right side with a manager's user, can do everything on accounts table except delete because we just revoke the delete permission to account table from the manager user. So I told you when you are using the grant and revoke, then we were dealing with the objects. We were dealing with the objects that we completely drop the idea of deleting the uh, idea of deleting all the rows from the table. Like we have an idea that we have a revoke, we can revoke the complete select statement from a user. But there are some use cases you don't want this. That you don't want to revoke the privileges like delete privileges or slack privileges from a user from a whole table. Because there is there are some K 
cases where you want to give access to a user for some portion of your table, some rows of your table, or one row of the table. That's our row level story. So instead of object, we are now talking about the rows, the data, a separate rows data. So like you can grant or you can revoke some permission to the some rows of the data from particular user. How you can achieve that? So here, create table accounts. I have just created a table. Then I am allowing row level security on table accounts. So I just alter the table, alter table accounts, enable row level security. That's very important line. So alter table accounts, enable row level security. Now row level security is on. So now I am creating a policy, create policy, accounts manager, it's name of the policy, it's just name of this, it doesn't matter at all what name you are providing here. Own, that's the table name. To manager, using manager is equal to current user. So first one, create policy, account manager is the name of the policy. Own mean, name of the table, to mean, that column and the manager are two managers. If it's a user, two manager, user and the two using manager is a column name and then current user. That means if current user is equal to manager, then this will, you can only access the that host. That means if you have a data managers and you are logging with the managers table, then you can access that row. So if you have a, a row which have a column manager EMT, then only EMT user can access that row. So again, see here, I have created a table accounts and have a column manager and a text. Then alter table accounts enable row level security. I have created a row level security on that. And I have created a policy that the manager column is equal to current user. Then we can access the row. So I just grant all accounts to manager because I, otherwise you cannot access that table. Insert into values managers, percona foo example.com, then EMT percona, foo example.com that's a dummy data so i just select static from accounts because this table is belong to the complete so i'm just selecting the whole table here on the right side i just log in using the manager's user and when i issue a command select static from accounts you can see only the row which have a column manager name managers appears because we log in using managers and manager column have a manager's row, row where manager value. So it's compared a current user, sorry. It compared the current value of the user, is it compared the current user with the, with the value in the table column manager. If this match, it will show you the result. So if you log in using EMT user, like if you see on the right side, P SQL PostgreSQL minus U EMT, not managers. Then when you issue a command select static from accounts, it will show you the EMT percona foo at example.com only will not show you both the rows. So that's very really interesting because we denied the access. I mean, we are not giving the error, people, but people cannot see that rows. People can see only the rows which has 
for them. So it's just a trick. I will just created a policy on that. So only that use the column manager have that the same username that that rows can be accessible to that user, not all the rows. But that is called a row level scrutiny. So I just briefly discuss what is the authorization now we're coming to the accounting. So some sometime um, database terms, we are usually used auditing. So our audit, so, and, but in AAA term, we are usually called as accounting, but in database term, we are usually used the auditing. So, so I use, there are three kinds of uh, logging that people are more, mostly interested. The first one is a network log. Second one is a database log. Third one is a application log. That means whenever you want to see how many IP address and which IP address who is doing what thing, that is called a network logging. So you can see on your network log that uh, this IP address access database one million times or 10 times or five times, or at which time this IP address is accessing database and how long. So that's called a network log. So you can see in the network log that, that this information is, and this IP address is accessing the database. So then it comes to the database log. Database logs mean how databases use that you are inserting a data into table, a user is, deleting a data from the table, our user is selecting data from the table, our user is selecting, uh, performing some action on the database, uh, which action is usually performing on the database. So, so usually we will use a database log to monitor these kind of activities. Then comes the application log. It's all dependent on the user, which kind of a log the user wants that. It's totally dependent on the application. So we are not talking about the application log we will briefly touch on network log. We'll touch that at least we know the IP address, but then we are main concern about in the security is our database logging because we are discussing the post here, not the whole security module. So there are, I'm just thinking there are many, many tools available. Many, many, I have, I'm last working on a, and monitoring tool. So I think dozen of dozen of tools which are available for PostgreSQL for the auditing, for the monitoring. So PostgreSQL will they have a logging system. So PostgreSQL have a PG stack statement. It's a view in which you can see the statements level logging, that which statement is taking what, how much time and what is the, which user is doing and which database is accessing how much time and so you can query that table and you can get a full information. So a log statement, where you said that log statement is equal to static, that means all, so log all the statements, so you can configure PostgreSQL logging system. So it's quite a, PostgreSQL provide really good logging system here. So you can even log the PD stat activity where you can see the activity on the database. So it's, PostgreSQL logging system a really good tool. But along with that, there are third party tools are available. So like there are some basic tools are available. PG audit is one of them and PG stat monitor. Actually I built that and Percona is sponsoring that tool that it gives a really good real time aggregate of uh, aggregation and everything and the monitoring the uh, PostgreSQL system, so you can monitor your PostgreSQL, your audit your, you, you can use for the accounting auditing for your uh, database. It's a really good tool, so you can. So I have link of uh, PG audit, PG stat monitor and audit trigger. So there are dozen of you see, I can provide here, uh, I told you that uh, I think dozens of uh, tools available for that. So then we have a 
you can write your own trigger based custom implementation like you can write a trigger on a some specific user that that whenever that table x says then you can uh, audit that statement into another table into the file into the something so you can write your own triggers to do the accounting so it's a custom implementation it's a user base how much you want and how much you want the next topic is the encryption suppose in, in encryption there can be a three level encryption and all the three levels are really important the first one is encryption at rest that mean where your database reside where your you have your database that is data is encrypted the second one is application level encryption so application level then yani your application is uh, do the encryption for you third encryption in project that on a network the data is encrypted that nobody can capture the zero data in between so you have to take care of all of these and encryption at rest file system encryption you can do that so for the file system encryption we i will say how many i think many methods are available you can see the uh, you can google it and you can see the file system encryption available for different for linux windows and other operating system you can see so you can encrypt your system and you can have your database on that encrypted file system postgres will only provide a column level encryption it's i just calling it's a column level encryption so you can encrypt your data it's a country module in postgres ql where it's called pg crypto and then comes a database a table level encryptions come and in a table level encryption postgresql does not have a table level encryption i call a dd transparent uh, data encryption so it doesn't have but postgresql community is working on that to have that in a near future so i have provided a link where these things are being discussed So I just put that no discussion is going on on implement that in PostgreSQL, but it's not there. And encryption in transit PostgreSQL provide the SSL, so you can configure configure SSL, so you can connect your client using the SSL, so so that can be possible in PostgreSQL. So file system disk encryption, you have loop loopback device, so you can use that and you can encrypt in the Linux. So geom based disk encryption or G B D E in free A B S T it has as a D M crypt. So in for using this you can have a file system disk encryption. So you can encrypt that and you can use a PostgreSQL on that. So your data will be secure at rest. So now because we are not discussing, I'm not discussing the how do you encrypt your data on the disk because it's not topic of PostgreSQL. but when we are talking about the pg crypto that is a post still thing so we want we have to discuss that in this webinar so here i have created a table create table foo so where we have a name and we have a data and we want to encrypt that data so i just insert the data insert into foo values foo pg sim encrypt that's a function of then a bar bar is a data you know the bar is a data i'm just inserting that data and i'm using a some textual key i'm just putting a as key it's not a key it's just a uh, using a text so it will encrypt using that so select static from foo you can see you can you cannot see the actual value which is a bar or just a encrypted value you can see here but you have if you have at the name of the key that as key then you can decrypt that data using pgp same decrypt and if you provide that key then you can see the data bar you can see the data bar so if you don't want to encrypt and decrypt your data if you want to use a table where you want to store your password and you don't want to decrypt that then i use create table a uh, table is already created because we just created that insert into foo values one foo crypt 
in in that in that case i'm using a function named crypt and then my pass is my password and then i use a salt here then the row is inserted then i select static from foo then this values come this is an encrypted value of the password so now i cannot decrypt that value but how i can show that my password is correct or not then i put select static from foo where password is equal to then crypt my pass password i again encrypted that my pass and then i check that it is correct or not if it's correct then i am getting the row if it's not correct i'm not getting that row so if this my pass is not correct if i put here my pass 1 so i will not get any row here so that's the thing that if you are you have encrypted your password and stored that password and nobody can see that what is your password even if somebody knows your database password cannot see what is your password in that table but if you want to verify it you can just put your password what you know your password and you want to try that it will show you the row if its password is correct if it not shows you the row if password is incorrect so that's really good thing that nobody can decrypt your password even if have a even he is a super user of database he cannot decrypt your password within the table you can verify that password if you have already know the password so security best practices so it just tips uh, four five six tips always use firewall to protect the attacks from the attacks because if you are not using the firewall you will always be vulnerable to attacks don't give access to all use private list of ips to give database access it can be used using firewall so your host is secure it can be used pghba.com to give only access so some ip addresses to access the database never expose your database port to internet so if you have a system and you uh, your application so your applic only your 5432 port is open to your application not for the whole world so a whole world can see your 543 port is open so it should be only open for your application because people are using your application not the database but so don't allow allow direct logging to your database system if your system is on the internet and or some somewhere and then you have a database uh, installed on your system so don't give access ssh access directly to the database to all the internet or all the network secure your backups if your backups are not secure your data is not secure if you are securing your database you have very good security system for your database but your when you are taking a backup and it's just hiding somewhere and it's not secure so data is your database is not secure because the backups are real data so you have to secure your backups too and this is a very interesting thing listen address is static in a postgresql talk conf file be careful when you are doing that mean you are giving the access to the static all ip addresses so be careful about that that's it so that's it from my side so i think we are already spent so we have 8 minutes for the questions and so Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Ibrar. Um, have to say, between your presentation and um, you know all of our attendees, this is one of the most active chats we've we've probably ever had. Um, so lots of good questions have come in. Um, if we don't have a chance to get to it in in the last few minutes, um, we'll I'll send them over to Ibrar, uh, who could follow up with you um, specifically. So taking it from the top is there a difference between local and host dot 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 127.0.0.1 and of course it's ipv6 equivalent um this comes from the postgres authentication configuration slide okay, let me go to that slide here so sorry can you please repeat the question so i just missed 
sorry about yeah. that. I was start reading the question. Sorry. So of just repeat the question. Um, is there a difference between quote local and quote host 127.0.0.1? Yeah, if if you uh, uh, read the correct that is this local mean is a local machine. And if we are providing here is the IP address is the same thing, it's a local host. In the network time, local host is equivalent to the 127.0.0.1. It's a both the same thing. But we are when we are talking, we are writing local here in pghba.com on the first column. That means it's a local machine. We are explicitly specifying that, specifying that. So there is nothing need to be right here in the address. So if you the similar the equivalent of that, if you write it here, host then database, then user, then put 127.0.0.1, then it's the same thing. So first line and second line is same if address is 127.0.0.1, that's it. It's funny, I'm getting a note that uh, actually that conflicts with the, uh, with the crowdsourced answers. So I'll definitely send you this chat bar so you can check it out. Uh, okay, for sure, definitely. Um, Okay, another one. How does RDS PG SQL use PG underscore HBA.com? I don't have an experience with the RDS. Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, can you, uh, I can clear one more thing that here, the previous question. If uh, people are think they're, they're confused about the uh, local and local host. When I'm calling as a local, is that mean it's also a Unix? If we are talking about the Unix domain socket, it's 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 there because there is no concept of uh, IP addresses there. So if we put local and then a database user and no, then it's uh, Unix domain socket will be used and you will connect. But if you provide host all all and this, it's same thing because you are connecting from the local host and because the, for the Unix domain socket, you are connecting from the uh, local host. Then it's things are same, but how PostgreSQL is creating is a different thing. For, for the user perspective, it's the same thing. Great. Another question. Is there an order of precedence in an event where multiple policies conflict? Can they conflict? I'm not very much sure about that. I will answer it uh, in the chat room, the, when I see the chat room. I think the, the, the last one has a preference. And I think I will reconfirm that. I will reconfirm that and answer on that, okay? Wonderful. So next one, you mentioned earlier that you can use LDAP to authenticate a large number of users. I'm yes. assuming we can combine LDAP users with row level security. Is that correct? Yes, you can you can use that because it's a similar user. If LDAP is used only for the authentication. So that's correct that you can use that user for the LDAP. That's correct. You can use that. Great. Um, any specific use case of multiple policies that conflict? I'd expect all policies to be and, and only rows that successfully qualify for all policies are displayed or processed. Yes, all policies should be should be uh, apply applicable because if, if the rows are accessible for, from the, all the policies, then you can access the rows, that's correct. Great, and our final question, I can't believe we're fitting all these in. Any thoughts on security of restoration from backup? Restoring a backup, actually, it's it's there is no concept of because you have to do that in yourself. You have to provide your security for your backup and your restoration. PostgreSQL does not provide uh, anything for the restoration. You have to you uh, do that yourself. Okay, fantastic. Um, well, those were all of our questions, and we are now at the top of the hour once again. So I will um, say goodbye for now. I hope to see everyone online at future webinars. Thank you so, so much, Ibrar. This was a fantastic presentation. And thank you to all of our um, 
attendees for this incredible chat. Um, so whether it's morning, evening, afternoon, middle of the night, no matter where you are, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you back here next week. Thank you, everybody.